the whole idea behind it is I was doing a non... So Matt Pincus, who plays bass and judge, he used to own a publishing company called Songs Publishing that had The Weeknd and Lord and Pharrell and like, you know, real heavy hitters publishing. And through the publishing company, we had a non-profit division called Know Your Rights. And Know Your Rights was set up so that if you didn't have your publishing in order as an artist, a punk rock or hardcore artist, you'd come to us, we would register you for free. Uh, we would administrate your publishing um, without taking commissions so as nonprofit, right? And, and we didn't get too far with that, but we did it. We set it up and we piggybacked on songs. But as we were doing it, we kind of realized there was a real disconnect with the way hardcore and punk rock is positioned in digital streaming world these days. Like, it doesn't do well, obviously, everyone knows. Like, you know, when The Weeknd's got a billion streams for a new song and, you know, like a hardcore band, like Circle Jerks is one of our bands, like the best they've got is three million streams, but that's taken a long time and they're one of the biggest punk rock and hardcore bands that stream. So we were concerned like it or not, everything will be moving to a digital space in music, 100%. There will be one day no vinyl, no CDs, none of that stuff. It will all be digital. And the fear is punk rock and hardcore will get lost once you get to that space because, you know, all the founders die, music, you know, artists will die, labels will go away, and like no one's going to, who's going to care about taking a Youth Brigade record and making sure someone can hear it in Spotify, right? Nobody. Right. So... Matt really cares about this music, as do I. He reached out and he was like, you know what we should do is a label. We should do a nonprofit label that's kind of like we we're doing Know Your Rights, but we'll try to buy these old catalogs or partner with artists and buy their masters, part of it with their partnerships. Um, and then we'll do everything we can to get this stuff positioned in the streaming digital world so that when we're all gone, it lives on and it's buttoned up and people are taking care of it. And, and artists and their estates and everyone's getting paid. That's important too. We want to make sure that everyone's being compensated fairly. And, and so, yeah, that's the reason it exists. Now, there's a physical component to it because that's the way we're trying to promote these records. But the real goal is to try to get traction with streaming and make sure that bands like Seven Seconds get their algorithm kicking in. So, you know, it's like getting into the millions of streams. So then there's, there's a real, you know... Uh, purpose it for it to stay in that world so that's the whole point okay now you guys first release was circle jerks group group sex second release now we're doing the crew yeah um how are you guys choosing these releases like is it are you just going down the byo catalog or is it well is it so we partnered with circle jerks first and we have the first two records which are group sex and wild the streets wild the streets will come out the end of the summer oh okay uh, and we got into a deal with the Stearns. Like Sean Stern was one of the first people we sat down with, Matt and I, three years ago at least. Matt still owns songs. Stern to uh, the BYO. They're... Sean Stern and Mark Stern own BYO. The yeah. Youth Brigade guys own BYO and run punk rock bowling, right? So we had sat down. We sat down with Sean probably three, four, five, probably four years ago, and talked it up. Sean's obviously been doing this a long time. He's knowledgeable. BYO is a great label. It's important to us and. Uh, but we never made a deal. Like he just was like, eh, you know, and, and, and went on. But, but yeah, that was, you know, we got circle jerks and we've got BYO and we have a bunch of other kind of deals on the table that we're figuring out. Um, so as we're going through the BYO canon, seven seconds, the crew is, is the biggest sung record on, I think, uh, well, I think of that era and then, and, but it'll, you know, we'll, we'll start peeling away the stuff. It'll, Youth Brigade will come out next year. Aggression is the next record to come off BYO. That'll be available probably around Thanksgiving for pre-order. Um, and we'll get to seven seconds walk together. The SNFU records will come out. Uh, we'll figure out what to do with some of the stuff like Real Crown Review and Hepcat and some of those titles. Cause we, we think those are great records. Um, but we're kind of getting to a space now where we have like so much. I mean, I could release records till the end of 2023. Well, um, and so, yeah. the, so then the idea is the part, the, the vinyl component, is that to kind of like, hey, there's vinyl, but yeah, then to leave so the So the reason, so, so we live, like I said, we were trying to get these records into a digital space where they can, you know, have it, and they're not going to ever thrive like the weekend, but they need a place carved out from where you go, okay, this punk rock exists in digital world. But, to shine some light on it, the best way to do it is take these physical releases, repackage them with these booklets. And another thing we've kind of 
realize is you, you want to show these records in some sort of historical context. So you don't want to just throw out seven seconds to crew per se, go, hey, it's been remastered and here it is. Like, it's not really exciting and it doesn't do, it doesn't help with the greater game, the long game, which is to get this stuff like kind of placed in a historical perspective. So you got to tell stories about these records. So that's why there are these booklets. That's why there's this deluxe treatment to them. And that kind of gets, if you're, you know, music blog or music, you know, it's exciting to talk about that. It's not really exciting to say like, hey, like Youth Brigade's available on Spotify. Like, that's not exciting. So that's why we're doing it. And then also like, you know, it's a historical thing we're doing. We're trying to like preserve this music and, and also make it so like when I'm gone and Matt's gone and you're gone, there's some kid who could, you know, go down the rabbit hole with all the literature that's out there and all the music. And if they found the Trust Records canon, they can learn about these records and maybe, you know, if you're listening to Circle Jerks group Sex for the first time and you're a 20 year old kid, you know, like that record's 40 years old, you don't understand, I, I wouldn't think you'd understand the context of why that record's cool and what was happening in 1980 when they wrote it, right? So that's why the, that's why those booklets are part of it. And you're telling a bigger story about, about those records. Well, that's, that's the thing is like, uh, group sex, you guys doing the crew, like those are two very important records, like very sure. special records. Yes. They won't all be that mammoth of a record. Right, right. right. Yeah, I mean, because like the another thing about punk rock and hardcore is some of the coolest parts about it are not those big records. It's some of the under the other stuff that kind of slides, you know, like there's bands. band I love is Starlag 13. Mm -hmm. In Control is one of my favorite records. That band's not on the par with Seven Seconds historically. But I think that record's great, and I think Starlight 13, like, you know, would be a band that we would want to work with too, right? I'm not, you know, because you want to tell that story, and that's just as important. And then if you go, let's say, to like, I don't know, you can just pick them. Like, North Carolina, there's a band called uh, Subculture, I think, that I got, uh, that came out. That's a really cool record. That's a, it's a great record. Um, so I think eventually we want to kind of get the Trust brand built up to a, to a point where if we're releasing something, and you're a fan of the stuff we've done before, you'll... Even if you don't know the band, you'll take a chance on it. You might, it doesn't mean you have to go buy the record. It just means you'll go check it out on some streaming platform. Like, oh, I want to hear this record. Like, you know. So then, like you just said, not everyone's going to get that mammoth release. But I know that you guys, and correct me if I'm wrong, this may have changed. So you guys are dealing with BYO now. I know that there's other labels you guys are going to be dealing with. Sure. Like, and like you just said, you can release records till the end of time. I guess what I'm wondering is, is... Like, are you ever overwhelmed by just, I'm just yeah. saying, like, the sheer, like, I mean, because just know, one of these releases. Seven days a week on this stuff. Right. It's crazy. It's so, we're so busy. Like, and we have a team. Like, we, it's not just me. We've had, hired a cool digital marketing team. We have one of the best publicists in the music business. We have one of the great creative directors in all of the history of music working for us. I mean, they're not, they're, no one's working for free, but, like, we have good people uh, on the team. You know, and we, and we and we use Equal Vision and Merch Now as partners for things we need to help to have them do lifting on. But yeah, it's overwhelming. It's, it's a lot of work, and and it's like it's a nonprofit label. So I kind of had to make the choice when we started diving in. It's like I'm never gonna get rich, but then I was not gonna get rich, obviously, or else I would be rich. So it's just like now it's trying to find like the groove and how to do it, you know, and do something that's worthwhile and fun that you know puts a roof over my head and food on the table, and that's what trust is. So you know, mm -hmm. at least we're having a good time. So now you guys were, um, I'm sorry, your job in this, are you the guy that gets the bands and kind of like gets I, people to... Yeah, so me and Matt are co-founders of the record, of this <laughs> label, uh, and I run it. I, so I run the, the ship. Matt and I, you know, we lean on Matt when, when we need him, because uh, Matt comes from like a whole wealth of music business knowledge. It's amazing. So he's like, this, you have like, your partner's like, a walking encyclopedia for how the music business works and knows everybody in it. So it's, it, it works really well, but Matt's got his, you know, he's in the game, like working on his stuff. Like, so he's, you know, buying these music digital properties or whatever he's doing, it, like, you know, he, but he's doing big, big picture stuff. And then I'm running Trust Records, but I know Trust Records is important to him. So it's not like, you know, it, we're both excited about it. Like, I think, you know, there's a people on my, Matt's team that help us on financial side and stuff. And they're all excited about what we're doing. Cause it's like a feel good story. You know right. what I mean? Like you're like the, the minute, do you know, Keith Morris finally gets paid for his art after 40 years, finally gets paid. Think about that. That's exciting. You know, like he's excited. 
and we're excited to do that. Like that's that's the point. Like it's like Kevin Seconds is a hero. He's a friend, but he's right. also a hero of ours. And to see him, to see Seven Seconds kind of have a moment right now where there's a rebirth to that name and that band, and people are excited about the crew. And the crew sold well. When people see the packaging and like knock on wood, unless the printer mess it up and we don't know, it's going to be fantastic, right? And then, uh, so that's a feel good too. Like it's it's you're, you're you know we have some cool content coming out with Kevin and like Shepherd Ferry and and the thing with Kevin and Matt Pinfield. We we dropped the thing up today, which was the not just boys fun segment, but that's right. a whole Matt Pinfield interview with Kevin. That's ex that's fun stuff, you know, and uh, it's, it's great to do. And it stokes Kevin out and it makes Seven Seconds cool. Again, not that they weren't cool, but like, I love seeing people talk about Seven Seconds. I love like there's a buzz on Seven Seconds. Well, that's the thing, you know, you talk about cool. Like these releases, the group sex one and what the Seven Seconds one looks like it's gonna be. This looks like, they look really, really well put together. Yeah. Like, and my, and my question is, like, how long does it take for you guys? Because I'm saying the, it, this isn't Sure, just, I know what you're you saying. Know. So we started working on Seven Seconds in September. Okay. So we're, so right now, if anyone, if you know anything about vinyl, the vinyl business in the world, it's a mess. Because it's every, taking forever, Everyone right? is, there's not a lot of pressing plants. There's also not a lot of raw materials to make the vinyl records. So there's a shortage in that. There's a shortage in plants. And there's a resurgence in vinyl that's, crushing i mean vinyl is doing better than cds like vinyls like you know target and uh walmart started carrying vinyl once target and walmart started carrying vinyl well, obviously they're not carrying seven seconds they're carrying taylor swift so what's happened is taylor swift can sell five hundred thousand records so what do you think happens you know what i mean like you're a pressing plant and you're like huh i'm gonna press these eight thousand or nine thousand seven seconds records or i'm gonna take this five hundred thousand piece taylor swift order that's gonna take weeks to complete because if, if you know the thing about vinyl production is you need like almost like a real engineer like a, to, to run the, the pressing thing it's not like a cd duplicating thing where you just hit play and duplicate cds right i mean it's an art form because you're cutting a lacquer you're cutting a you know acetate you're doing the, so it takes like a real engineer to understand that and there's not a lot of those guys around in the world either so it's a it's it's that's what you're up against but yeah for seven seconds to do these things properly like there's no real timeline to this stuff. You know, we have a schedule that we want to follow and we don't want to just, you know, we want, we'd like to put out physically six to eight releases a year. But each one takes time, it takes three, four months, seven seconds, like to gather this oral history we're doing and to like gather all How have you stuff. been doing that? Like, like is that Well, just... so for seven seconds, so we brought up board Mike Gitter, who's a longtime friend and obviously huge seven seconds fan and knows all the players. So Mike kind of ran the, he, he well, he didn't kind of, he, he spearheaded the oral history part of it. So he got all the interviews, he put all together, he sent stuff to Kevin and I, uh, you know, pretty much every bi-weekly and we would kind of go, yeah, this is cool, this is not, like, you know, and then uh, put that all together, uh, help gather the photos, help gather the flyers. Um, we were lucky enough to have Allison Braun, who's a, a photographer from that era. She had about 15, 16 photos we were able to license from her, uh, including some from the, the Olympic show where, the cover of the crew shot at this Olympic show in, I want to say, 83. Were you able to find that picture? No, we weren't able to find that picture. That that was a hunt. That's, we, Kevin Kevin had a girlfriend at the time uh, who took that photo. She gave the photo to Kevin. Kevin has moved so much over the years, like, he just lost it. And I reached out to her, and she didn't have it or the negatives. But that would have been great.